This is The Upper Room with Joe Kelly. Saturday night, we're rolling here till 11 p.m. tonight. And as we have advertised all week long, we have a very talented singer, songwriter, guitarist, composer on the line. Her name is Kat Dyson, and she is currently the feature guitarist in the Donnie and Marie house band. She has toured and performed and composed and recorded with the artist formerly known as Prince, Sydney Lauper, various musicians in New York, Montreal, all over the world. James Brown and the artist don't have anything on this lady. Her name is Kat Dyson. How you doing, Kat? Good to see you. How you doing, Kat? Oh, everything's excellent. Sounds like you got a, a pop and show out there. Oh, yeah, right. How you doing? Excellent. You hear us clear now? Yeah. All right. So you're out in L.A.? Oh, yeah. Out here in the land of Lala. It's actually a pretty, pretty nice day. It's been warmer in other parts of the country than it's been here for the last couple of months. Right. And I have been playing color commentary for, geez, I'd say since you released it in October, and we've been playing it for the past few months. Well, that's great. I'm, I'm really happy that you're playing it and that, you know, people kind of like what we try to do. And one of the things that uh, I like the style of blues and funk and R&B, you don't hear that from a sister on radio these days. You know, oh. stations, you know, in New York City, uh -huh. uh, where they, I, you, you lived in New York City for a little oh, while, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. You remember Frankie Crocker? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Frankie used to play music like that, and somehow it got pushed to the wayside, and we're trying to bring it back here. And it's been uh, getting a lot of good publicity here in Connecticut. Well, I mean, that's excellent. I mean, what's happening, I find, with the business now, they're trying to get back to it, but everybody's looking to reinvent. So they're starting to call it different things, acoustic soul or old school or, you know, it's a new label for the same, you know, but it's the same tree, same roots. Everybody's just looking to pune and, you know, shear the the leaves and branches and make it new so hey I, I you know i love it all all right can you tell us a little bit about how you uh originated color commentary how you recorded it well it started actually in montreal um because i was touring a lot with uh, different artists uh, uh canadian and american and international colin james uh, uh celine dion i also had a blues band of my own opening up for eddie james and buddy guy and and all these different folks, and I had friends who were doing the same, so we'd get together and just write tunes and play tunes, and for me, music is like communication, so um, I called it color commentary because, you know, you bring a subject to the table and everybody has a little something to say about it, like, you know, like in sports, there's one guy that's really, you know, saying, oh, look at the play, and there's another guy that says, hey, what a great play, you know, so for me, um, whatever, you know, rhythmic background we brought in you know was basically the subject and everybody just added their own commentary to it and speaking of some of the musicians uh in montreal you, you had jim hillman who's very talented percussionist right oh he's, he's he, i call him the groove master i love jim right and ron smith of course mm -hmm. so anyways do you plan on recording with them on some future projects? Oh, without a doubt. Rhonda is actually um, in Los Angeles now and uh, is relocating here. And uh, she's working on her project, which I worked on with her, and she's going to work on this one with me along with uh, Paul Peterson and Ricky Peterson from uh, from Minneapolis. And uh, she'll you'll probably work on it also and some of my other friends in L.A. And uh, for sure, I'll... Uh, keep that Nashville line open because the Wooten brothers are friends of mine also and Jan Pulford and you know so you're familiar it, with it, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know getting together with people and we're writing as we get together and because of all the new technology we're able to just you know send tracks and swap tracks over the internet or you know via data files you know I mean it's, it's great you know the, the whole fiber optic thing is making it easier for people who live far to still kind of do their thing together right so as far as you know you are very into buying technology for your gear oh for sure i wanted to ask you is there any piece you're looking to buy in the near future that you haven't already oh well there's always something <laughs> <laughs> there's always something i mean who what musician uh, in their right mind wouldn't love to have like the whole big pro tool system right at their houses um i mean there's always a wish list and they're always coming up with newer stuff that does more you know, easier, faster, greater, better. Uh, but I 
to try to, you know, get a handle on what I have and uh, what I can't do. You know, they're tech, you know, technical people out there that are way, way talented, you know, that uh, I try to align myself with. Well, going back to talking about Montreal, when are you going to be up for a, a Jimu or a Felix out there in <laughs> Quebec? Because oh. next time I go out there, I want, I want to see you up on stage oh, accepting an I award. No, I don't know. I mean, what I, what, I, what I do and what I try to do is not really, you know, for industry recognition. Right. Hopefully it's for the listener, whoever they happen to be. Well, believe, uh, believe it or not, on our show we do play, we play uh, you're familiar with Rude Luck? Yes. And uh, Luke Marville? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he, he gets play out of here, Kevin Yeah, the guy Perron. in Rude Luck are actually friends of mine, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, doing Notre Dame de Paris and everything, so. Excellent. So uh, we, we give it up for Quebec a little bit. All right, now. And, uh, you know, we have had all week people calling in the show and emails across the country. If you mind if I ask a few questions from our listeners and people on the net? Oh, far away. Okay. Um, Batik wanted to know who inspired you to become a musician. <laughs> well, it's a combination of folks, I guess. I mean, um, there were a lot of guys in my neighborhood. I have four brothers on top of it, and everybody seemed to be playing some kind of instrument, and I was playing piano. And, you know, these guys would be outdoors, you know, with their guitars, like, you know, making tons of noise, and I was in the house practicing piano. I was like, Mom, this is boring. So actually, my mother bought my first guitar. <laughs> and, and where is home said, originally? Hey, go out and, you know make noise with your brothers so that was cool so where is home originally um originally virginia okay yeah and ronald dyson any relation uh, the r&b singer i'm no? i'm told there's a distant second cousin thing happening i haven't confirmed it <laughs> okay <laughs> okay moving on to a couple other questions uh carolyn from philly she actually is felicia collins cousin mm -hmm. and um she wanted to know what kind of advertising does one do to sell a CD on the internet? Well, uh, there are tons of search engines, and uh, I'm also um, in touch and doing business through Amazon.com, which is, you know, uh, really is helping a lot. And um, uh, collecting dust uh, is a label in and of itself, and they are in contact with Rolling Stone online, and they're, you know, all the all the trade magazines are online now, so it's you know, makes it easier for you to send them a notice of what's happening and who's doing what. And then with MP3, people can actually go to the site, check it out. You know, uh, there's tons of ways now. For as many search engines as there are, there are as many ways to do it. And it's, it's constantly changing every day. I, I, you know, I don't profess to know it all, but, you know, I'm trying to do my little bit through the things right. that I have that have helped me. And, you know, if you don't mind, uh, do you want to give out the address for your website? Oh www.catdyson.com right and she has a lot of great links to all her friends who she's worked with in the music business so you know and that's sticking constantly together constantly adding and changing and i'm trying to add more and more to that i i was just with uh, george clinton he's in la right now working and we're going to go in and we jammed together over at the house of blues and he just gave me some great pictures so look around i'm going to have that on my site and link it to their site and he's just great oh he's incredible i've seen he's come to connecticut uh numerous times four hour shows and just slamming. Yeah, they recorded that show, uh, Westwood One. I don't know when they're going to broadcast it, but he's helped me that they do have plans, and we just we just grooved until they turned the lights on and said, okay, get out. <laughs> because, because actually you were on stage at the... Uh, wh where was the last performance you were on stage with, uh, George? That was uh, Valentine's Day this year. Right, so... It was, it was a blast. Oh, yeah. How many people on stage? Was there room? Oh, my God. At any time, it's got to be at least a dozen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, can we touch base on a few people you work with throughout the years? Sure. I mean, you, your resume, it's not one page. <laughs> you just, you have worked with people all over the globe. Cindy Lauper, who, by the way, I don't know if you know this, a couple of weeks ago she was the commencement speaker in Bridgeport, Connecticut for a local college. Wow. So, Cindy Lauper, and she went over pretty well. Well, yeah. Cindy's got a lot to say. She right. she knows who she is, she knows what she wants, and she knows how she got there. So that information itself is invaluable. Sure. So how did you get hooked up with her tour? Um, actually, um, a friend of mine, Felicia Collins, from the uh, Letterman Show, was working with her, and uh, she got the call to do the Letterman Show, and uh, Cindy was then holding open auditions. So she told me about it, and I was in Montreal, and I went down and auditioned with a ton of people and uh, made the cut. That's and great, yeah. And I've been friends since then. 
And moving along, Colin James. Oh, great, he's, great guitar singer. He's, he's the best. That you know, everybody's looking for the new Stevie Ray. I mean, he he studied and worked with him, so he's he's the king. I I call him the king of attack guitar. That guy is like he doesn't leave any stone unturned, and I love him, and he knows it. And Rhonda Smith, of course, you, you're working together with her. Rhonda oh, yeah. Smith, of course, you work together with the artists as mm -hmm, NPG. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, I jammed with them uh, over Memorial Day weekend in Vegas. It was great. Oh, yeah. We heard about Studio 54. Yeah, that was a yes. lot of fun. George so what, Johnson was there. Just a ton of people. Just fun, you know. Oh, what, what songs did you jam on? Oh, songs kind of merge one into the other. <laughs> You know, they start yeah. out one and it's like, it's like Funky Devils. If you ask me, I couldn't give you a set list because they just, you know, they start out being one song and then it goes into something else. <laughs> right. So how, how did uh, actually you and Rhonda get hooked up with the artist? Um, actually through Sheila E., another good friend, who um, had a tape from the two of us because we were going to work on, a, on writing some stuff for a different project. And uh, the artist called Sheila and said, I'm looking, you know, for female musicians because I'm changing. Uh, my formation and uh, she forwarded our tapes to him right and you know we went and auditioned and it, it worked and i can remember actually my first time seeing you on stage with the artist was at roseland and during talking loud and saying nothing oh that was <laughs> an electric night oh yeah the artist yeah. screaming out dyson dyson and he brought you out there and, and you know it was a different change because i've seen him plenty of times 13 times going way back to 1999 and, mm -hmm. and the band you could just see you having fun up there. Oh, it's total groove, and it's so organized, even though it's loose. But everything, you know, the music, every every part that you play has a space to breathe because you can hear everything because he's got it all worked out. Right. He's an absolute genius at that. And one of our listeners called in earlier tonight, and his name is Jay the Electric Man. He had a question, actually, because we know when you're playing with the artists, the rehearsals and all the work prior to the concerts is it intense right oh without a doubt but he had a question when you're on stage with him you know in between the songs is there a lot of talk in between the songs like cues instructions uh it depends every night was different there's never never a night where things just run the same right you know there are no dats on that gig right <laughs> we're playing <laughs> for anybody who thinks there are no they're not <laughs> so uh oh i know it's live i mean I, uh you came to connecticut at the oakdale theater you mm -hmm. recall that one back there, the small theater? Yes. Yeah, and um, anything memorable about that show in particular? I, I always love the smaller face, places because you can feel right. the people and you feel connected. Right. And, and you can feel the circle of energy that you send out. And we, and we know we loved your playing out there. A lot of people missing you on stage with the MPG. Hey, yeah, you know, but, I mean, but when he decides to play, nobody can touch that because the music originated from him, and I'm so happy for him that he's decided to play more, actually. Oh, oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's great when he decides it's time to, you know, just put this guitar on and stretch out. You know, it's his thing, and I love it. You so know? so there's an open invitation to go back in the studio with him anytime, oh, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. why don't we dig into, if you have time, uh... More on color commentary, if you don't mind. Well, like I said, it it, it was basically done as um, he actually inspired me to just go ahead and just test the waters and put things out. At that time, the record industry, everything was folding, shaping, changing. Who knew what label was going to be where? And I'm like, well, i got a little something to say, so let me try to do it myself. And with the help of Jan Pulsett, who's... You know, been my good friend since I started working with Cindy Lauper, and she believed in me. She says, hey, I'm doing this thing on the Internet. You know, let's, let's just put these songs together and, and do the best we can and put them out and see what happens. Um, so it wasn't done with any kind of big intent on, you know, grabbing the major or whatever. It was done to see, you know, who was out there, what I could do on my own, because he made such a point of stressing ownership and the, the, the attributes of, you know, being in control of your music and your project. Right. Because I know so many artists that I've worked for that end up feeling helpless in their art. Right. And I didn't want to be one of them. Yeah, and oftentimes, I mean, 
in the Paisley Circle, you'll see people kind of just fade away from the scene, and, and obviously you haven't done that, and it's, it's no, really well, refreshing. No, when I came to him, I was working on a color commentary, so it was already in progress, and he knew it, and he wanted to work with me on it, but at the time, he was right. working on Larry Graham, Shaka Khan, the new record for MPG, something else, orchestral. <laughs> right. There was just enough hours in the day. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, he expressed to me, he says, well, I want to do a record on you, too. I said... Well, when they add another 40 hours to a day, you'll have time, <laughs> you know, and um, who knows what the future holds in that way, you know, he's, you know, like I said, definitely been supportive. And a couple of songs, uh, actually my favorite song is uh, You Know What I Like on there, uh -huh. and um, yeah, I had a question. That's a live, you know, I mean, like I said, it was put out as a calling card. You know, a lot of people in the industry say, well, you know, continuity, you know, those the, 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 the executive guys always right. have something to say about it. But it was done, you know, uh, as an answer to people who have come to see me live and, and they like what we do live. So it's got a little live, a little studio, and little things that are intimate because when I play live, I do all that. Right. You know, uh, which serves to frustrate some record people who, you know, want you to... You know, play 20 songs that all sound alike. Right. If I did that, it's like eating broccoli all day long. <laughs> I can't do it. Can't do it. Can't do it. How about to data one? Uh, I love the philosophy, one day at a time. That's how I live my life. And uh, that song has a lot of powerful meaning to there. Well, to data one, I wrote um, actually for a funeral service of a friend who was a very, very, very spiritual man. That's and, John, right? Um, he helped me and a lot of other people, you know, just try to, you know, seek out your spirit, get in touch with it and know it because it, it serves you and you're in control of it and there's no, no two ways about it. So he used to tell me that all the time. Just take one day at a time and don't worry about anything. You don't right. have anything to worry about, you know. Good so philosophy. So I wrote that, you know, in memory of him. And how about the acronym? Is that kind of George Clinton in, uh, influence? No, actually, no? that 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 came from John. You know, okay. he was always doing stuff like that. He had a great sense of humor. Sounds like a real uh, nice guy. Mm -hmm. Also, how about his tears go by? It's a Rolling Stones song. Keith Richards, by the way, lives about twenty minutes from here. So, wow. if he's out there listening, waking up right now, you know, well, uh, it's a um, what? What? Uh, why'd you choose it? It it was a song that. Um, was melancholy for me um, because my mother passed away and she like I said bought my first guitar and um, when you got certain guitars they'd give you the little music books and it was in the music book and it was always in a major key but it when I heard it it always sounded so sad even right. though it was in a major key so I decided to do it in a minor key in memory of her because that was one of the first songs I learned how to play as a little kid and she was so proud that I learned it you know so that's for my mom all right and Motherless Child, well, you want to give a little background that on that? Too. Yeah, that's you know, I figured that, it was linked that up. That basically is, you know, ancestral. Right. For, you know, for, you know, I think that the the basis of American music is, is very much rooted in gospel and blues. And um, that's something that I just do, you know, uh, the same way Tiger Woods, when he won his first open, you know, gave a shout out to people who came before him who made it possible well, right. for him to do what he does. I mean, I had a, the great pleasure to play with um, Jesse May Hemphill at a blues conference in Montreal, and she's just an amazing guitarist. She actually grew up and learned and saw and actually maybe even played with Robert Johnson, and this wow. woman just touched me, you know, she just sat down with her guitar and just touched me and you know you have to you have to give you know um, recognition to those who've come before you and she says oh well, I, my grandfather was a minister and I used to play the devil's music and they used to take me out back and, and spank me but I did it anyway <laughs> you know <laughs> so, and, so obviously but she, she also played guitar in the church because they had no pianos and she's from the bayou you know? right right how about, uh, you know, when I listen to your CD, I hear Pop Staples for some reason. A any oh, uh, influence? Who, who, yeah, <laughs> I love him. And Mavis. She's right? amazing. I had a chance to work with her. I mean, you know, you hear all these things because your parents listen to that music or, you know, somebody around you, and you're just surrounded by all kinds of music. And I've, um, because I'm an army brat, we kind of travel all around. Right. So the only thing that connects you really is music, you know, when you think about it. You know, at least that's the way it's been for me. 
so as as far as the recording of the new album you're talking about a fall release right that's what i'm shooting for okay will it be released uh same record label via the internet i'm not quite sure uh, you know i'm thinking about uh definitely on my site and through mp3 i'm gonna post some previews and you know i'm gonna just take take uh, the opinions of people who listen to it and uh, you know i think you know the people that are listening once they're going to let me know oh, yeah, what sure. i need to do because you know in the end execs are taking a chance and it's their jobs but right. people that are listening you know you're not making them listen they're listening because they want to okay. and if they you know i mean and in the end i serve them any musician serves the listener and any musician who doesn't think they serve the listener they they need to stop playing music exactly, now, exactly. i know that's very strong <laughs> And I'm sure I will be criticized for it soon after. <laughs> but, you know, we serve the ears of the listener. Right. Can I squeeze a few more questions in before maybe we get into a cut off the album? You still have time or? Sure. I've okay. got a few more minutes, but I do have to go. Okay. Let's see. A question uh, from Az wanted to know, what project did you work with Bernie Worrell on? I work with Bernard Ruel, actually, with David Stewart. Okay. Uh, David Stewart's project that he worked on. From the Eurythmics, right? Just, <laughs> I mean, we cut a lot of stuff. I don't know what they ended up using, but we did cut a lot of stuff together, uh, doing vocals and, you know, a little backing stuff. And uh, this Bernie's just great. Yeah, the, I think he's out on Puerto Rico really this cool. weekend. Yep. You know, just inspirational guys. Now, how about any other musicians you haven't worked with that you'd, you'd like to join in the studio or on stage? Oh, you don't have enough <laughs> air time for that list. Right. <laughs> you don't have enough air time for that list. I mean, I'd love um, at some point to play with Bonnie Raitt. I mean, you know, she's also a, a large source of inspiration. I've had a chance to, to play B.B. King's guitar. And that wow. was, like, amazing for me. And John McLaughlin let me touch his guitar and, you know. Just unbelievable, you know, unbelievable things. I've been so blessed and so lucky in my life that if it's over tomorrow, it's all good. All right. So how about uh, vacation? You going up to Montreal anytime soon? Oh, well, I had planned to go up <laughs> for the jazz festival, but I'm going right. to be playing at the Baked Potato in uh, Los Angeles on the 6th of July, which is right smack dab in the middle. Oh, right in the middle, yeah. Of, uh, <laughs> Montreal's death. You miss what? I saw the interview with you. I LA Music Week the week before on the 28th at the Martini Lounge, and then the 6th at the Baked Potato, and then the 14th, um, also in Los Angeles at the Joint, um, where I did like um, the, my first gig after my record launch. So, And after that, I go to um, Japan for three weeks with Sheila E. and the Congregation. Wow. Which is basically the Magic Hour Band. Um, with a few extra singers and uh i lived in taiwan and you know japan is right next door mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they are some serious appreciative music fans out there yeah so we're gonna go there for three weeks and uh then we'll be back and i'll be back at back at recording and trying to finish up this this project that i'm jumping into and uh just stay tuned to the site and you'll be hearing a little little snips and snaps oh, we'll, we'll definitely and keep and, up you know, to date I want to open up a page that will be a poll you know to let me know what people think and I'm not afraid I mean I'd, I'd rather you know people that take the time to come to my site and listen give me their opinion than some guy that doesn't know me who's afraid of his job right to care less about my music that's know? right and just seeing the bottom line the dollars and not the music and exactly yeah exactly so anyways I want to thank you Kat I know you're you're pressed for time what's a weekend like in LA any concerts tonight going to check out? Um, nothing at this moment, but I'm sure there's tons of things going on. I'm just busy writing, so I'm, I'm in a whole other mode. I mean, that I'm even out of the house today is uh, rare. <laughs> oh. Okay, I, I really am appreciative of you um, taking the time out of your busy schedule. And I'm appreciative for your response. Right. I thank you again for your and your station support and everybody out there who's listening. Thank yeah, you I mean. Much. People have uh, been digging the record for for months, and we just want to get the opportunity to speak with you and hear what's on your mind and what's coming up well thank you so much and we're going to end it we're going to get into i think i'm going to play my favorite track off the cd excellent you know what i like and this was recorded up in montreal right yes sir okay All cat right. dyson color commentary here it is 88.5 wvf in fairfield the upper room thank you very much cat thank you